Okay, okay, listen, when you're out in a place like this, I'm not saying you should be connected. In fact, I think you should be disconnected. But there are certain reasons and times that you might wanna have some sort of link back to society. So now, with the advent of the Starlink Mini, I can actually fit it in my backpack. So right here is the tiny little Starlink satellite that I can now use to work from anywhere pretty much in the world. I simply just need to set it up and here's the kicker. I'm actually powering it by a battery pack and this thing plugs into Starlink and will power it. And I tested it at the house. I got almost three hours of constant streaming out of this one battery pack. And that's incredible, revolutionary. Now you can take this thing with you, backpack. So here's the secret sauce. This is a cord, it will be linked below. One end has a USB-C and the other has a barrel jack. It's a 2.1 millimeter barrel jack that will go into the Starlink itself. Now all you need to do is simply insert this into the USB of your battery pack. I'll link the specific one down below. Then on the Starlink, if you can see here, there is a barrel jack. Put that in here and all of a sudden, now we got power. Next step, we just need to pull out our phone and get this thing connected to a satellite and we will have internet. As crazy as that is, we will have internet up here. So now that we're back, I'm all showered up and clean. I got to thinking about the hike and it was an eight mile hike with a decent amount of elevation, but I really didn't notice the Starlink in my backpack. And as you saw, it easily fit in there because it's so small and very lightweight. But I don't really think that is going to be my main use case is taking it along with me on hikes. I think more so I'll be using it in my RV, but even with an RV or a van, and if you're in that lifestyle, you know how important it is to have lightweight things and small form factor things just because you don't have a lot of space but that lifestyle can be rather well rough and tumble so what you need to do is protect the starlink and unfortunately we're not seeing any cases yet come out from starlink and there's a few from third parties but they're not exactly what i'm looking for i think i found a solution that'll give me all the protection i need and it's at my favorite store Okay, before we get to the store, let's go over a few quick specs. In terms of footprint, this thing isn't that big. It's about 12 inches by 10 inches by 1.5 inches. It also doesn't weigh that much. It's about 350, 360 grams, which is about 2.43 pounds for us Americans. Now, in terms of power, it can run off anything from 12 volts to 48 volts. And we'll get more into that after I pick up this case for the Starlink and talk a little bit about how I use the Starlink in conjunction with a couple different batteries and what my results were. Here it is at Harbor Freight, the Apache 3800. This is the perfect size for the Starlink Mini. It's a little bit deep or thick if you can see, but overall, I think this will keep it super protected. So overall, I think this is a good purchase for $40. It just barely fit, but it will provide a lot of protection. I do wish it was a little bit thinner, but I mean, hey, we'll probably have to wait until someone actually designs something for the Starlink Mini to get a Pelican-like case that just is a little bit shallower, a little bit easier to move around. I think this depth and this protection is a little bit, well, overkill. But in rugged situations, this would be so good. And for $40 as compared to what you're gonna pay for a Pelican, hey, you gotta love our freight. So from here, let's go into our last two segments. And our last two segments are gonna be about powering the Starlink with battery. And then I'll give you a few of my conclusions after spending about a month 
with the Starlink Mini. This is all my batteries that I use for certain situations and that I have used in testing Starlink in terms of powering it with DC solutions. Now, a lot of these probably look familiar to you. These are battery banks. This is just a raw lithium battery, and this is a solar generator or just a larger battery bank. First, you saw this in the beginning. This is my smallest one. It weighs 2.5 pounds. It's also 27,000 milliamps. There's a couple of things to point out. First, with all of these, these are 65 watt and above power delivery batteries, meaning they'll push out that as a max. Now, Starlink can run on 60 watts, but I don't like to push it. So I recommend if you're going to get any of these types of batteries, just make sure it's 65 or above in terms of being able to push out that type of wattage. Now, this one's also important because it's 27,000 milliamps. And the reason that's important is because if you intend to fly with Starlink or with a battery, the FAA and the TSA say you can't fly with more than a 27,000 milliamp battery and you have to put it in your carry-on luggage. So if you're looking to travel, this is going to be the only solution. Now, all these products and all these cores will be linked down below. They're not affiliate links. I purchased all these with my own money. Now, I would use this one probably the most because I'm just going to be on foot or hiking for the day and I want to bring along the satellite. Well, yeah, this is the number one solution because it's only 2.5 pounds. If you look at the 2.5 plus what, 1.5 ish. So now we're at, you know, under five pounds to bring, you know, broadband Internet with you. I, I'm my mind's kind of blown by that. Now, if I'm stepping it up and I don't mind carrying a bit more weight, this one is about five pounds. This does a hundred watts power delivery and it's 50,000 milliamps. I got a little over six hours of internet, hardcore internet streaming with this. No, not hardcore like that. I mean, you know what I mean. Anyways, moving up from that, we have a 70,000. Now this one, um, I would probably bring car camping. This one weighs eight pounds. I don't think I'd bring this on the trail with me, but still not too heavy and is going to deliver um, probably something like nine or 10 hours. Uh, again, that's continuous use because the Starlink is really cool. If you're not using it hardcore, then it goes into an idle mode and it's only about 20 watts. So depending on what you're doing, you know, just basic interneting, you know, versus streaming, it's not going to pull as much power. Um, so you might be able to get quite a few days off of that, depending on how much you need to use the internet. These are the big daddies, solar generators, if you will, um, just larger battery banks. Yes. They also have typically an AC power port. That means they're just taking DC and inverting it into AC. You could just take your wall plug that ships with the mini plug it in there and it would power it just fine but that is very inefficient. You're going to lose a lot of power that way. So it's best to try to power your Starlink with DC because you're going to get the most out of your battery when you are off grid. So I would recommend putting this in DC mode using the same cord that you saw before, which is over here. And that is the USB-C to barrel cord. Plug this in and that goes for any of these. Simply get this cord. Now, the one thing to note about this cord is you want to make sure we're getting at least it rated at a hundred watts, which means it can handle a hundred watts of power through this cord. If not, it won't be able to power your Starlink. And that brings us to our other cord. Now our other cord is for this raw battery. Make sure you get a lithium battery though, uh, to power the Starlink. There's a lot of advantages there. I won't go into them right now, uh, but know that you're going to also need this cord. Now this cord has just got uh, gator clips, positive and negative go on here. And then it pushes it out as a cigarette lighter, cigarette adapter. So once we have this connected, then you also need to purchase a male cigarette adapter to USB-C. Same thing. Make sure this thing is capable of pushing out at least hundred watts. You put this in here, then you take the cord that you saw in the beginning and you just plug in your USB-C and then your barrel goes from there. And of course, these are going to be hooked to this battery. Now that seems like a lot, but what you're getting is more for your money because these things have USBs in them and some protections from, you know, oversurging, for example, um, they're going to be a little bit more expensive than something like this. But if you're looking to save some money, you can get, you know, incredible deals. Now, all these are knockoff brands. 
I tend to use knockoff brands with electronics because they tend to come from the same factories that name brands come from. So I've had some really good luck with a lot of these things and they'll all be linked down below just in case you're interested. You do have to pay for this cord. I think this was only $20 as an inline fuse here. And then of course the cigarette adapter to USB also has a fuse in it. So you just want to make sure if you're using something like a raw battery, you're putting it behind fuses so there aren't any problems. Whereas these right here all have protections built in. Again, I would use this and this for hiking, this and this for car or RVs, and this one just for RV base camp. I'm not taking any of these from this way up while I've got it on my back and I'm under foot power. So that's my battery lineup. I walked you through a couple different use cases and why I have so many. They all performed just fine. I didn't have any problems. Starlink booted up rather quickly and no problems whatsoever. So these are great solutions depending on what you're looking to do. So with that said, let's go into the lab and wrap this up. So I have to be honest, after spending about a month with Starlink, I'm absolutely blown away. Now I was in the Starlink program. I was one of the first, you know, couple hundred of people to get the Gen 1 and I'm absolutely floored at how far we've come since that time. The folks and engineers over at Starlink are really killing the game. Quality of this, yes, it is plastic, but the fact that a router's built in and it's this size is just revolutionary. A couple of things that I like about it above and beyond the portability and the size and the fact that it's an all-in-one is the fact that I can easily run it off of a small battery pack. I'm also getting really good speeds on this thing. When they tell you you are only going to get up to 100 megs, that's not what's happening right now. I'm actually routinely getting 180, you know, 150, but I'm going well above the 100 that they say you can get out of these things. And from what I understand from a recent FCC filing, they're trying to turn up the heat on this a little bit. So we might see some other generations or even this one be able to pull down even faster speeds. Now I have owned Gen 1, Gen 2, I skipped Gen 3, and now the Mini. And I will say Gen 1 and Gen 2, one of their big problems is it takes forever for them to find a satellite and to get online. I'm saying it's probably like 10 minutes to 15 minutes on average that I had to wait for those to jump online and find a satellite and they would move all over. These and Gen 3, you can just set on the ground and they typically connect. You don't really have to worry about moving them. At least that's been my experience as long as I have a decent open sky. And it boots up really quick. This thing I'm surprised I put the battery pack in and well under five minutes, probably more like two to three minutes. I'm already online running a speed test. So the things that I like portability all in one, the fact that it boots up and now the fact that I'm getting really, really fast speeds. In fact, I'm getting faster speeds out of this in my gen one and my gen two. Now I understand the gen three and I camp with someone that has a gen three. They are on par as well. They're getting really, really good speeds and they also boot up rather quickly but again that has a router and it's actually bigger than even gen 2. so this is a huge advancement and i think a lot of folks are going to find value in this little guy now there are two plans one plan you pay 50 bucks a month you get 50 gigabytes the plan i'm on is actually a regional plan i'm paying about 150 dollars for this for unlimited data and i can take it wherever now I did not test it in motion. That's just not a use case that I'll do. However, I've seen a lot of people that are using it in motion and it, there doesn't seem to be a problem. This is probably, I'll just go ahead and say it, favorite piece of technology of 2024. The only thing I wish, and I think this is going to be solved, is that we'd see more accessories come out for the mini. Not just a case, but even cords. I don't wanna go on Amazon and buy a cord. I'd rather buy everything directly from Starlink. But I will say everything I have linked has been tested. All the cords have been extensively tested and I haven't had any issues, but I am eager to see because I just, their, their engineers are clever what they come out with for the Starlink mini in terms of accessories. Overall, a five out of five for this product. And I rarely give out five out of fives and in danger of sounding like a full fanboy, Elon, you really nailed this one, bro. Anyways, I'm Hill Phantom. I appreciate the watch and I'll see you next time.